I started saving little sculptures that I made. That's, you know, like uh, you're sitting at a restaurant and you start twisting up the lemon rind to make it into something. Anything like that. Just little inconsequential things that I had always thought of as uh, just nervous energy and meaningless. I moved to New York, I showed them at Artist Space, and some people saw it and wanted me to uh, sort of recreate it at MoMA. I sort of went into a little bit of a funk. I was thinking, is this, is this all I'm going to do, is like keep collecting these little things for the rest of my life? Which I do, I still, I still make them and collect them. I started making bigger things with the same sort of freshness of attitude, without any reason or baggage, just thinking, look at this, and look at this, and maybe if we put those together, that would be cool. It too sort of fell off and stopped being a challenge. Uh, it, it became easy. Things that are easy aren't really that much fun to me. What I started doing maybe around 10 or 15 years ago is uh, public art. You start with a blank slate, just thinking uh, abstractly, here's a situation, what would be amazing to see there? And can I make it for the budget? And so that's, that's what I'm doing now. So I knew about Cranbrook, uh, I never thought I could get in, I had no art background, but uh, I was thinking that I was going to uh, either go to graduate school in ceramics or uh, go to uh, Denmark and become a cabinet maker. A, a friend of my wife's was having her MFA show, so we went to Cranbrook and I met Richard DeVore, who was teaching ceramics there. And I talked with him and we really hit it off. And he said, well, why don't you come here? It was great. It was just a, a dramatic time of change and growth for me. You know, I, I came in as a young pottery student and I think I, I left as a young artist.